Hi guys, just going to do a um, quick video on the truck that I'm using for the Gypsy Caravan that's being made. DIY uh, Gypsy Caravan, camper van, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to run you through, this is basically going to be part one out of about a hundred. Uh, I'm just going to run you through uh, what sort of truck I've got and how it's all going to come together. So the truck itself is an Isuzu and it's an NKR model. 250 cab or crew cab they call it so as you'll see it's got um, a cabin in the back as well as the front and this one's a tipper so it has a tipper tray uh, tipper tray very solid uh, these sides are extremely heavy so they'll all be taken off no need for all the sides um, I'll leave the tipping gear on it because it'll have some advantages that I can explain later but this is just brief I just wanted to show you the truck uh, and how it'll all come together and where everything will go. So we're looking at a space from the back to the front, 4.5 metres long. So on top of the uh, actual cab, there'll be a loft. So if you can imagine the back will be built up to about 3.4 metres. It'll come across all the way to the front of the truck, down, won't touch the truck. There'll be a bit of clearance between the cab and back again and down to around there. So if you roughly imagine, that's how it's going to be when it's all put together. Being um, I'm going for the kind of gypsy style, and I know some people don't like the word gypsy. Uh, I've never seen it as being a bad word myself, and I'm mainly using it uh, so people understand the style we're going for, which is, you know, rustic, old, uh, and uh, recycled, uh, just like the original gypsies would have done it. They didn't run around to Bunnings spending $10,000 on anything. It's not how it worked. And uh, we're going to try the same here. Uh, for a few reasons. Why not be frugal and why not build something that not only looks unique and eclectic uh, but it can be done for nearly nothing. Uh, so on the truck we've got a bit of an issue at present. As you can see no registration plate on this one. Uh, it's been off the road for a couple of years as it's been worked on. And as you can see nearly everything's been replaced. New lights, massive tow bar which is a massive plus. We're going to have a 20 foot plus caravan on the back uh, so that's about three and a half ton. Uh, it's actually more than that, but the ball on that is three and a half ton. The rest of it could take about six. Uh, so you imagine a 20 foot caravan on the back of the, the motorhome as well. Uh, you know, you get a fair bit of room, a fair bit of comfort. Now the first issue we had with this, getting it registered, this is in a Victorian Australia, was this little Huber. That's a compliance plate. It tells you everything about the truck. When I brought this truck, you can see up there, it has 5,200 crossed out and then it's been re-stamped with 4490. So it's a six seater, uh, blah, blah, blah. Now the problem with this is, normally you've got a few of these. There's an engine number one there. There's a max uh, gross vehicle mass. So it tells you how big you can, well, how much weight you can carry in total, that kind of thing. And so does this one. Um, right at the end there, you can see a figure, the total Weight of this truck can be uh, six and a half ton, pretty much, just under. Fraction shy of six and a half ton. So at the moment, this is sitting at about two and a half ton on the road. So it gives me a fair bit of play, uh, you know, with adding a lot of weight to make this camping camper. Um, now, this compliance plate is causing me a headache at present because no one um, has any paperwork for it. I took to get the truck registered. And as soon as they saw that being stamped in, and it looks pretty bodgy, and I'll agree, it does look bodgy. They've, you know, not, not exactly how it should be done. What should be here is a blue plate underneath here, another compliance plate, which should have all that information clearly displayed, not just re-stamped. So that was a bit of a headache. To hear the mechanics telling me that um, they can't register this truck ever, um, well, not, not as a truck um, with a stamped out uh, setup like that, uh, so that was pretty hairy and scary and that was all happening yesterday when I went for a roadworthy certificate to get it registered and um, I went to the, the Vic Roads and a very nice man did a lot of research for me and he's actually found the engineer certificate for it I have to now go to uh, Well, I've sent in a letter to Vic Roads um, Who do the uh, who basically can do the search? Um, and do all the paperwork for me and find where it was registered which office it was Give me the engineer's certificate in short. So um, luckily I got out of that one pretty lightly and all because of the good natured man at Vic Roads, which is really nice. Again, I live in uh, country Bansdale, so people here are pretty nice, you know, um, as nice as anywhere I've been. So 
just quickly going around the inside you can see all the seats have been re-trimmed in a truck this is a 92 model in a truck this old you generally have rips everywhere especially here where everyone jumps in and out the seats in trucks are pretty cheap and nasty um, i probably will replace these with an airlift seat later on like a good trucking seat because uh, top trucking you know you need some comfort in there she's pretty bumpy and whatnot on the road it's a tip truck it's not a luxury suspension car or anything so you can see this one's a manual standard five speed all pretty basic dash has actually been replaced because it was uh a renderer owned this one uh, the roof lining's all been done um, there's been a, a two-pack spray um, spray paint put on it so not just hardware spray paint or anything it was all done properly see the back all nice just did the, all the seat belts they're all brand new just did them a couple of days ago you can see everything's pretty tidy for a for a 92 truck apart from that rip on the door uh, everything else here is pretty tidy work so um, now just get to the tricky part that anyone looking to do anything to do with uh, you know trying to make a camper out of a truck this is the valuable information so the height of any truck this is how we do it find a tape measure find in the dirt so to work out the allowable height and this is basically for any truck you measure across the back wheels so if I measure across these wheels, we're looking at 1.88 centimetres. So 1.8 centimetres, which is basically as tall as I am. So as tall as I am um, is basically the width between those back wheels. Now why is that important is because you multiply the distance between the back wheels and 1.85. So not two times, just under two times the size. So 1.88 underneath the wheels is what I've got. So I can go from the ground 1.85 times, which takes me to a total of 1.8 at 3.44. So I'll see, you probably can't even see it in the shot, but 3.44, it's, it's actually here. So I've got to extend this tape measure uh, up to where the wind is going to knock it out of my hands. But um, basically, 3.4 metres is what I'm able to, to come off, off the ground. Uh, so, biggest trick if you're buying a truck and you want some massive four metre high thing, you're not going to be able to do it with a short truck. This is actually a, like a short chassis truck, so it hasn't got a lot of distance between the wheels. As you can see, it's, it's quite small, like I can nearly touch each side. When Ford Traders, some of the other trucks, they're actually about two metres. So then you'd be up there, you'd be getting up to like, you know, 3.9 metres in height. Uh, which will give you a higher loft as well. So if you're dealing with loft space, the loft space on mine at 3.4 will work out. All right, so my, my height of my roof is two meters. So I can go another 1.3, say, because I need a 10 mil, at least, you know, a 100 mil gap between the cab and the top of that. I, I don't want them slapping together. I wouldn't, don't ever build them onto your cab. You'll smash it to bits with movement. Movement happens. No matter what you're building it out of, it will happen. So that's the way to get the width of the tyres gets you your height maximum. And for a truck like this, my, my width of what I can go is actually wider than the tray on here. So my width for a legal tray is to the wheels again. So we've got the wheel measurement and it's 300 beyond the wheels. So I could actually come out, you know, I could come out to about here. So I'm not actually going to. So 300, or even if I allowed it 150 mils each side, that's still like that. So if I'm allowing 150 extra, I've got a fair bit of overhang I can play with on each side and still be legal. So that's any overhang. So if you have a, an, an annex that's gonna roll out the side, that kind of thing, it all should fit within that boundary. So they're my main tips for you, anyone doing it. Don't just buy a truck and think you can put on a, 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 even a pre-made body, like Winnebago make them and other companies make them. They slide straight on to a truck frame like this. Um, do your measurements first. The most important thing for everyone will be the wheel. Wheel distance is what it all comes down to. Um, then we go to quickly to weight. Uh, this truck's been downgraded, so it's a little bit more complex than normal, but at the end of the day, I can take about two tonnes of weight. Now, when I go to do this build, all these are going to come off. And these are seriously heavy bits of metal, like overkill. 
uh, total overkill. So in this build, we're going to take the back off, the sides off. There's a spare tyre over there which will be left where it is, but dropped down about 200 mil roughly. So it'll be unbolted. It's actually on the other side of the tray here. So as you can see here, spare tyre. That'll be lowered because I want to cut all this out too. I don't need all this extra weight. Uh, and uh, it's just kind of in my way because I want to be able to get the cab as close as I can to the actual motorhome. So motorhome will be, it's important that there is, you know, quite close. I could almost build it up to it uh, and make a movable area where I could pull out the back window in the truck so you could climb through if, if I wanted to, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'll just leave that. It's all getting a bit complex trying to do stuff like that. So in the end of the day, how this build's going to work is try to get as much weight off the truck as I can already. Like, like I said, taking all these off. Uh, and then what I'm, what I'm basically thinking of doing is moving that exhaust pipe because as you can see now there's an exhaust pipe there I'll just check that you can actually see that yeah yeah you can see the exhaust pipe so on any truck now there's new regu regulations so you can see the exhaust pipe here you can imagine that my body on the truck on the, the motorhome is going to come out about here like so I'm going to have up here that's no good I can't have that there now if this truck hadn't been downgraded to 4490 and the downgrading was done so you can drive this on a car license even though this one is too heavy to drive on a car license normally the downgrading and all that compliance plate I was talking about earlier the problem I've had uh, with no engineer certificate found for it yet although there is one in the system somewhere thank God is that any vehicle over 4 0.5 on 4.5 tons or over 4.5 tons you need to get another license um, the smallest license you can get is a LR which is light rigid so it's like for little trucks uh, and there's all different classes of licenses medium and heavy and different classes but to really to own and drive a truck this big uh, you would need to apply for your LR license now I don't have my LR ticket but with this one it was downgraded by an engineer so I don't need to do that because it's under 4.5 tonnes now, um, I'm able to drive this on a car licence. Anyone can drive this, uh, which is an added bonus because uh, if I did get my ticket, I'd rather also have my wife be able to drive it. And even getting a light rigid licence these days, you're up for about a thousand bucks plus a day or two of tests and you know all that kind of stuff. Now, like, I consider myself a pretty good driver, but I've still got to do at least a day testing, which is seven eight hundred dollars just for the day. Uh, it's just money I'd rather spend on the build than worrying about, you know, a license. So, at the end of the day, anything on or under 4.5, you can drive with a car license, but it has to just be under 4.5, so I shouldn't say on 4.5. 4.5 and over, you need a bit, uh, like a light rigid license in Australia anyway. So, this is able to be driven on a car license. What they did for the downgrading, they changed some of the suspension in, in the truck basically mucked around with the tyres a little bit, changed the suspension, changed a few other little things, which the all up cost to do is normally about $2,000 these days to have it done. So if you are looking for a truck, and I've seen them done up to 6.5 tonnes downgraded to 4.5 or under 4.5. So there are ways around it, um, but it all costs money. It's an engineer's certificate, and uh, generally you've got to go and get work done. It's usually to do with the suspension. There's leaves in the suspension, big slabs of metal that sit on top of each other. They generally pull out a few, so they, they make the suspension lighter. It's all kind of weird how it works. They're basically making the truck not so much lighter in weight, so you can use it, but they're making it so you can't take as much weight with the truck. So it's all a bit weird, you know, at the end of the day. But the main thing is this drives on a car license. So I just wanted to give you a really quick tour of um, the truck that's going to be used uh, for what we're doing. And, uh, and mainly explain the width and height issue. Um, for me, this is not going to be a problem. With a, say, a 24 foot caravan off the back here, that'll have all my, like, a, a basic kitchen, uh, it'll have toilet, shower, all that kind of stuff. Because we've got four kids and uh, we're going to be homeschooling when, when we're running around the country, this truck is going to be more of a loft up the top for the two young boys. They can separate that into, like, their bedroom because it's actually quite big. 2.6 metres by about 2 metres is, is roughly what it's coming out at. It's a bit more than 2 metres. But, so that's quite a, a large area just for bedding. Like, um, you know, it'd fit a king-size bed, for example. And uh, below is going to be a lot of very space-saving furniture. 
mainly all this side will be de desks that will fold into the wall and fold down. Uh, so when they're not in use they'll be folded up. Um, and on this side there will be a couple of bunks, which we don't really need, but it's always good to have some extra bedding. Um, as to if we leave the caravan and we're off somewhere else, we can still sleep everyone in the back of the, the truck um, in case we don't want the caravan. Some places it's a bit hard to tow a big caravan into, like the middle of a city. So we're just going to have ample room, but everything's going to fold up. Uh, it'll be a part that I'll cover uh, quite extensively, the build of each part. The bunks that will fold up, and they will fold up from normal sized bunks into only a small space on the wall and still look good. It's still going to be rustic. A lot of old furniture will be pulled apart and recycled and turned into the beds and that kind of thing. Um, so it'll all look good still. It'll all be recycled. Old looking. It will be old. The wood will be old. Um, and really, I want most of it to be an open space though. Uh, the idea of uh, four kids sitting at a couple of benches studying. Uh, you know, I want them to have a nice open space. I don't want it all cluttered. The caravan is more the clutter area, toilet showers, like all that kind of stuff. So this build is actually going to be quite simple in the back and not, not too over cluttered. I just want more of the space and I want a lot of light. For example, the, there's a, a large window I have over there that I bought the other day for 20 bucks. Beautiful big window. It's almost as wide as the build that I'm doing. So up in the loft, there'll be a window that's 900 uh, by 1.8 meters long as a big sunlight up on the roof because it'll keep my historic looking gypsy style even though it's an aluminium light window it'll be up on the roof no one will be able to see it and it will open so it'll be a massive skylight which will open up their room a bit too where they can literally open it and stand up and look around and you know have a look at where we are and that kind of thing um, obviously not when you're driving so at the end the rest of the build is going to be quite simple it's going to um, be a lot of wood on the outside which always weighs a fair bit and at the moment I've got my eye on some very heavy hardwood, which I know is insane, um, to actually use weatherboarding, like old weatherboarding. Um, normally you'd make it pine or, you know, like a, a man-made kind of fake wood. Uh, but funnily enough, a guy who's only a block away from me contacted me and he demolishes houses and he showed me some samples of the wood he has yesterday, which he'll sell for an absolute song to me. And it's 120 year old wood, weatherboards off an old house and they are already distressed. They look absolutely beautiful. And I don't care about the weight because again, I'm not carrying a lot of load in this one. This one's gonna be pretty empty uh, and the caravan behind us will have a lot of weight. And with a tow bar set up like that, you know, it's not gonna struggle. When, for example, I have a car over here that I tow with, that um, it's a Sanyon Rexton and it's totally allowed. Like you can't really see my caravan, but there's a caravan up the back there under the carport. And this Rexton easily tows it on paper. On paper, this, this thing can tow nearly two and a half tonne, like 2.3 tonnes. Um, it's got a, you know, serious looking bull bar and that kind of thing. The car itself is a um, Korean body with a Mercedes engine and drivetrain. So all the four-wheel drive gear and all the engine is a diesel Mercedes. So you'd think, you know, that's pretty good. But even a small caravan, like 16, 17 foot, this thing tries to kill us occasionally. You, you, pick up some speed, you're going about 100, you're going around corners, and the whole car starts just getting pushed around, the weight of it pushes it around. No matter how much assistance uh, gear you put on it, it just doesn't matter, it's not safe. It's, you know, I just can't believe legally what you're allowed to tow with a, you know, because that's really an SUV, it's not a big Nissan Patrol or anything. You know, this thing, the, my van would probably have a better chance of towing than that thing. Uh, so, I'm always wary of safety, where as you can imagine, a caravan being towed by this thing, there's no way it is going to get pushed around. It's just not going to happen. So that's just in short, a really quick overview of the truck that's going to be used, um, how we're going to do it. And like I was saying before, the, um, the tray will be left. So the sides come off, a lot of this will be cut down, but the tray itself will be left because underneath that tray is some serious structural steel work. And I don't want to have to just do more work and spend more money, so I'll use what I've got. Um, the actual build, I kept tossing up between wood and steel for the actual framing of this thing and I've gone back to steel. Uh, the steel will be 50 mil steel, which is this. So you can see, square 50 mil. It's quite chunky, uh, very strong, and I've already got the system of getting into it. So you can see where these the sides come on. The tray will be cut down about here and the actual camper, the 50 mil will slide inside that. It'll be made to just fit inside here. So what I want is to be able to slide this whole thing off and on. 
Uh, again, if I'm at a campsite somewhere, and I want to take everyone in that, but I've got two and a half, three tonnes of, of motorhome behind me, pretty awkward. Some places you can't even go to because of it. It'll, it'll destroy the thing going off track a bit and some of the four-wheel drivey kind of tracks. A uh, truck like this can handle them. It's got twin tyres at the back, so it's got a lot of grip, you know. It can uh, get down and boogie really low. The engines are made for dragging a lot of weight, obviously. It's a tip truck. Um, but I don't want to shake my gypsy caravan to death and everything inside it. You know, a lot of the doors, like the back doors we have for it are lead light. Uh, that kind of thing. So last thing I want to do is destroy it. So this one's pretty simple because it's a tipper. The whole thing, I'll just have to slide under here. This bar here basically holds the tray, which I don't know if you can see much underneath the tray, but it's pretty serious. You can see the tipper thing in the middle there. That's the big ram. Everything else is just hinging off these two massive hinges. So what I'm going to do is cut the hinges across here and across the top here and leave the bottom part. That'll still sit there. So this bar, which is just a big hinge pin, will be able to be lifted up. And I'll build hydraulic rams on each corner, which a lot of high abs have. I'll make it so that a piece of metal slides out here and it will go down with a hydraulic ram. So it'll lift the whole truck up, um, which will lift the motor home off my truck and then I can just drive away. Uh, lining it up when you get back might be a bit tricky, but I'll have a camera mounted underneath here and so I can drive in the cab and I can see everything going on and I can see that all I've got to do is line up that bar has just got to fit inside here when I cut the top of these hinges off. So pretty simple and, and that's the only, way it, the only way it attaches to the whole truck. So I will put another mounting system up underneath where it actually will come off because uh, nothing holds this end on. It's, it's just sort of sits on the frame there. So um, the other thing I was talking about before, just quickly exhaust pipes, if I'm not boring you to death already with over going on about it, but exhaust pipes can't be modified on new trucks. They actually have to be three metres tall, which is about another metre and a half on that one, which is pretty crazy. Like the, the closest tree is going to rip your exhaust pipe off. But that's just new stupid nanny state legislation. You know, they, they go on changing laws so much, and that's the new one, that that pipe has to be like that, vertical and 3.5 metres or three metres minimum off the ground. But because I've got this truck downgraded, that, that, that little plate in there I was showing you and how the engineers changed everything so it actually appears to be lighter than it really is, the beauty of that is that because I'm under the 4.5 tonnes, I'm allowed to get that exhaust pipe and shove it straight out the back of the truck. When any truck over 4.5 tonnes, you're not allowed to anymore. That would have to actually stay. And as you can see, that is going to be a big pain in your bum when this thing has a motorhome on the outside of it. You'd have to box around it. It'd put soot all over your gear. It'd be horrible. And uh, the top of our roof will be covered in solar panels uh, and lots of them. So the last thing I need is that pumping black crap all over my solar panels. So um, yeah, so there you go. There's the little truck, my little baby. She's in beautiful nick for a 92.